What's up guys, number one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. And today we're gonna be looking at the top 10 stupidest card names in Yu-Gi-Oh. The TCG is known for like two things, inconsistent card rulings and cringeworthy localizations of card names. For fear of absolutely destroying any hopes I have to ever get a sponsored video by Konami, I'm gonna be calling out them TCG card names that are just real dumb. I'm sorry, Jerome. I know some of these are probably your brain babies, but uh, swing and a miss. Obviously this is subjective, and uh, we're also not going to necessarily uh, consider how good the card is. Uh, certain cards can have real dumb names, but are really good. So just because a card is stupidly named doesn't mean it's a bad card, per se. <laughs> this list is going to be pretty subjective, so uh, if you think there is a stupider card name, call it out. I'm sure it's also very dumb. <laughs> we're doing uh, we're doing a, a fun list this week because I spent all of yesterday uh, digging stumps out the front yard. So I'm exhausted. I'm sore. I gotta plan a trip for next week to Boston. So a lot on the plate. Let's do something fun. Without further ado, let's go. Number ten is Ancient Gear Golem Ultimate Pound. He's got a high opinion of himself, doesn't he? For the younger members of our audience, I will not go into great detail as to why this is a funny, stupid name for a Yu-Gi-Oh card. However, um, for the actual demographic that watches my videos, <laughs> there is no kids out there. I don't, I don't know who we're fooling. Sometimes an ultimate pounding is just what you need. No, that's a lot of damage! Level 8 Earth Machine, uh, 3k attack and defense. It's an Ancient Gear monster. I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I, I don't even know if they play this thing. It's a retrain of Ancient Gear Golem, which is interesting because it doesn't do the whole, like, when it attacks, your opponent can't do stuff thing, but it can attack twice. So that's, that's kind of cool, I suppose. And if it blows up, you get a polymerization, and it is a fusion deck, at least partially. So, sure. You play this guy when you really want to get Give your opponent that good pounding. <laughs> Number nine is Plunder Patrol Booty. Booty is a continuous trap card. Ah, we find ourselves with another card where its name invokes both plundering and booty. <laughs> There's gonna be, it's gonna be everyone, isn't it? They're all just gonna be this. Damn Jerome, you horny. I have to get that dog to bonk you on that with a stick. There's also Spriggan's Booty. Aren't Spriggan's like a weird wood person? I don't, they, that, that ass is gonna be, uh, give, give you splinters. But nah, we gotta go with Plunder Patrol Booty because the joke writes itself. What's funny about Plunder Patrol Booty, besides <laughs> the name, uh, it's almost imperative for the deck to function. The issue is they don't have an Earth Extra Deck Attribute Monster, so if you're playing against an Earth Deck, they weirdly make it awkward for you to play just by the virtue that they are an Earth deck, and it's extremely frustrating. It'd be cool if it was a spell card, because <laughs> as a trap card, it's kind of booty. Number eight, finally we get to a card that's not just a sex joke. Feels bad, man. Magical something. <laughs> Level four, Dark Spellcaster. All right, so Magical something. I love this card's name. It's so dumb. Because it invokes the idea that, like, you got Jerome hanging out in his boardroom, and he's all like, we need to name this card so we can go to lunch. And some other person was like, well, it's a, it's a, it's a magical something, right? And that was when Jerome was like, you know what? Print it. Let's go to lunch. And that was it. You phoned it in. You phoned it in, Jerome. What are you doing? It recovers uh, quick play spell cards from your graveyard. That's kind of cool. Uh, at the you gotta use stupid spell counters to do it, but that's that's kind of fun, I suppose. It's it's not a great card, but it, its name is, uh... <laughs> oh, man. Number seven is Interplanetary Purple Thorny Dragon. Whoa, first take. Holy sh**. That is an absolute mouthful. Uh, most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Why the dumb, right? Like, I don't. Is this thing supposed to be like that flying purple people eater? Is that is that the is that is that what we're trying to invoke with this? I had just about enough of your cute little stunts. It's level five dark dragon. Uh, basically, if a monster you controlled is destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can spell summon it from your hand. So it's uh, it's okay. If you're blowing up your own cards for an effect, then it might be a fun wombo combo piece, I guess. Cause you know, it's a it's a free body. So what is a free body? Let's look at an example. But mostly the only reason why people even remember this card exists is because of that stupid name. I think there's a beast too, isn't there? It's like basically the same thing. 
Number six is Anteater Eating Ant. One word. Level five earth insect monster, 2k attack, 500 defense. This one's fun. You can send two speller traps you control to the graveyard to special summon the thing. You can't summon it any other way, actually. It also has the effect uh, you can destroy one speller trap your opponent controls, uh, but it can't attack the turn you use it. It doesn't say once per turn. What? Yeah, you just nuked the back row with this thing. Obviously, why this is on the list is because Anteater Eating Ant is, uh, it's up there with Interplanetary Purple Thorny Dragon. First take again. Although, I have to give it kudos, it does describe what the monster is. It is an ant that eats ant eaters. Cause it's a big ant. <laughs> oh boy. At least most of these are clearly jokes. Speaking of joke, number five is Dr. Frankenderp. Uh, uh. Level three, Dark Psychic Monster, 300 attack and defense. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can uh, look at the top card of your deck, either put it at the bottom of your deck or reveal it and add it to your hand. But you skip your next draw phase if you do this, and it's only once per turn. The card's okay. Frankenderp. I don't like this one because this one is obviously a joke. It's just super cringe. Like, it's not even funny bad. It's... It's, it's not a pun. They just thought, you know, derp, cause like derp drum. What you doing, man? Can you eat telly this? <laughs> Worth it. Número 4, Pendulum Mucho. Pendulum Mucho es un monstruo de péndulo de tipo bestialada de atributo tierra de nivel 1 con ataque y defensa 0, escala 0. Como carta de péndulo tiene un muro de texto para indicar lo que hace, pero eso no nos importa. En realidad lo que nos importa es el hecho de que claramente los japoneses piensan que esto es lo que los hispanos hacen todos los días. Debo decir que esto me ofende, nunca he cantado en una banda de mariachis y en realidad las encuentro molestas. Y ahora qué tal un poema, las rosas son rojas, las violetas son azules y los péndulos apestan como tú. Siguiente carta. Number three is the man, the myth, the legend, the Lord of D. Back on my bullshit. <laughs> Why is Lord of D a stupid name? Well, um... In the TCG, uh, we, we have a weird tendency of either changing the word black to dark, see dark magician, or like uh, abbreviating the words black or dark. Don't know why. But instead, uh, we decided to abbreviate the word dragon. I have no idea why. So instead we are left with the Lord of D. <sighs> For you non-English speaking nations, I suppose maybe the joke doesn't translate, but in English we have a name for a certain part of the malanatomy, and he is apparently the lord of it. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. We also have the King of D and Lady of D, and not to mention Little D. <laughs> <laughs> that last one, though. But hey, at least when you've got Lord of D on field, you can let him play with his flute. And, uh... Alright, number two. Oh, fish. Oh, fish. I absolutely love this one. It is the stupidest. Okay, so what I think is going on here is in the artwork, the, like, the trap hole goblin guy is being attacked by a flying shark. Uh, that Banish Fish card, Fly Fang or whatever the hell it's called. And it's like falling out of the sky to attack him. So I think he's exclaiming, Oh, f or Oh, sh but instead it came out, Oh, fish, uh, because the fact that the I is actually spelled with an exclamation point, is, it's almost like it's beeped or censored slightly to uh, to indicate that it is actually a cuss, which is funny. Also, I have a bit of history with Ofish. Back when I was first reintroducing myself to the game of Yu-Gi-Oh in like the mid XC era, I was playing a lot of random decks to kind of get caught up with the new mechanics at the time, and I was really enjoying XCs, and I noticed there was a lot of water ones, so at one point Ryan and I tried to make an exclusively uh, water uh, XC deck. And I noticed we had this card, which is a counter trap card that negates monster effects. This was like, I think, I'm pretty sure this was before like Solemn Strike. It was like in the height of like breakthrough skill and uh, Fiendish Chain being good cards. So a counter trap card version was actually novel. It just required this clumsy, like, what is it? Banish a, or shuffle a, a, a banished fish, sea serpent or aqua monster into your deck in order to activate the card. And that that's a bit clumsy because it requires some setup to get you in a gate. But we, we tried building a deck around it. So I go to my card store and I'm like, uh, I talked to, to the, the the guy running it, and I was like, hey, 
you got any oh fish and he's like oh oh fish that's a that's a good card you should definitely buy oh fish so it became this big joke that i was i came in and i bought like all the copies of oh fish <laughs> oh fish it's in duel links all right not every card on this list is bad and we do have an honorable mention and that honorable mention it's your boy totally awesome yeah anytime i have an excuse to talk about toad is a good video this card is fantastic it's frankly probably one of the best exceed monsters in the game and it is certainly the best rank too and man they even made me this 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 totally awesome pair of sweatpants that says hippie hoppity your shit's now my property you got toad on the other cheek and no this was not just an excuse to show my butt on youtube but can we talk about that name though? That pun is rough. Although, to be fair to Jerome, Japanese is also a verbal pun with its name. I don't know it because I don't know Japanese too well. Gomenesai, Yamate! Most of my Japanese comes from a very particular source. So I get why they would they would uh, continue to the, have the pun, uh, but I think the pun in in Japanese has something to do with the fact that there's like there's like food on his head, like a peach or an apricot or something. We just got totally awesome. <laughs> we also have a dishonorable mention for this video. It's Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn doesn't have a stupid card name. It's the least stupid. It literally just tells you what the card does. It reborns a monster. It doesn't have some weird gobbledygook like flying purple butt f here. It's just Monster Reborn. Now Monster Reborn Reborn is one we can talk about. That one's dumb. That one's dumb. All right. Today's sponsor uh, is going to be two things. It's going to be uh, whatever, whatever's in this in this envelope I got from my P.O. Box address in the description below. If you guys want to send me fan mail, I don't know why you would, but if you absolutely must, that's the best way to do it. This letter is from Lily. Uh, hello, Dave. I love your YouTube channel. I'm sending you this letter from the Netherlands. Oh, very fun. When does Tommy and Jason make an appearance again? Well, Jason's actually currently making his own channel. Uh, maybe I'll throw a, a link in a comment or something uh, for his first video. He's... He's, he's picking it up quick, kinda. And Ty, he's a busy boy. Uh, but I'll, I'll drag his ass over here, uh, and I'll get him in a video. I don't know what. Also, I sent you a card. Please take good care of it. <laughs> it's an evil hero, Dark Gaia. Hardy har har. Well, I know exactly what to do with this thing. Cuts to throw it in garbage can. I'm gonna take one of my sleeves from my sponsor, Your Playmat. They let you do custom card sleeves. Uh, they're really awesome. I've been meaning to get like another set of these. Nice, shiny, crispy, nice and tight in there. And uh, this one in particular has the uh, the Davinator official tournament seal on it. Use my promo code Davinator one two one two ten YP to get ten percent off your order for your awesome custom card sleeves. All right, so number one, the dumbest card name in Yugi Man's is Oops. No, I haven't made a mistake. Uh, that is the name of the card. Oops. I did it again. Normal trap card. Target one card you control, destroy it. Okay, so not only is oops a stupid name, it's kind of a bad card. <laughs> As a normal trap card, uh, it is slow. Destroying one of your own cards is inherently a negative two on a normal trap card. And any, uh, any function that it might serve with cards that want to get blown up by your own stuff would probably be better served by things like Dark Hole. Why blow up one of your own things to get your combo off and you can blow up everything and also get your combo off? Duh. Or, I don't know, use one of the two field spells we have in this game that also do this and then also do something else. Oops isn't awful, it's just... We have better cards to do the same thing that do more. And they're also not called oops. <laughs> anyway guys, that was the 10 stupidest card names in Yugi Mans. Uh, there's at least 10 more. So if you guys want to see the other, uh, the, see the a second part of this, maybe we'll do it, I don't know. And remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.